In this video, we're going to discuss the relationship between science and religion. To be more specific, we're going to focus on the relationship between the natural sciences and Christianity, as one example of a religion. But we could expand the principles of this video to explore the relationship between other sciences and other religions. To get at this issue, we're going to do three fundamental things. First, we're going to offer a basic definition of both science and religion. Second, we're going to explore different models that depict how science and religion relate to one another. Finally, we're going to consider how science and religion might interact in a way that's mutually enriching. At first thought, it might seem easy to define words like science and religion. But some words, especially words that have broad meanings, don't fit easily into boxes. For example, religion is notoriously difficult to define. Dictionary definitions of religion tend to focus on a belief about God or gods, the divine. But this is a bit narrow depending on how we define the word God. There are religions out there that don't specify or center around beliefs in a god. The French sociologist Emile Durkheim defined religion as a unified system of beliefs and practices relative to sacred things, that is to say, things set apart and forbidden. The German-American philosopher Paul Tillich defined religion as something that deals with ultimate concern. By this phrase, Tillich meant a concern that gives shape and meaning to everything else that we might be concerned about the fundamental concern. The British-American philosopher John Hick defined religion as a response to the transcendent. In the most basic sense, transcendent means something that is profoundly beyond what we typically consider to be normal, the experience of something greater than ourselves. For the purposes of this video, we're going to combine a few different elements of these definitions to suggest that religion refers to responses to something ultimate or transcendent that are formed into systems of beliefs moral codes, and spiritual practices. To be clear, I'm not saying that this is the right or true definition of religion. I'm just establishing it as the definition of religion we're going to use for this particular video. It might not cover every religion, but at least it's a place to start. The definition of science is a bit easier, but not without difficulty. To keep things simple, we're just going to focus on two commonly perceived features of science. First, science uses a methodological naturalism. That's like 11 syllables on two words. Seriously, how smart am I? Methodological naturalism simply means that science limits its focus to things that are of nature, like creatures and natural laws like gravity, and doesn't focus so much on things that are beyond nature or supernatural, like gods or spirits or demons or angels. Second, science explores the natural world through something we call the scientific method, which entails formulating hypotheses based on observations of or information about the natural world, and then testing these hypotheses repeatedly to develop them into theories. Just to be clear, this definition of science doesn't mean that scientists must reject the existence of the supernatural. It just means that scientists recognize that the supernatural is not a matter of scientific exploration. So if supernatural things do exist, it's not really the purview of science to prove or disprove them. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. If religion tends to deal with the ultimate or the transcendent, and science tends to deal with the natural, how are the two related? And what happens when the evidence that we have from science conflicts with our religious beliefs about what is ultimate or transcendent? To answer this question, let's take a look at a few different models of the relationship between science and religion. A number of different authors, including Ian Barber, John Polkinghorne, and John Hahn, have come up with a set of models to describe the relationship between religion and science. While each set of models has certain nuances, here I'm going to focus on the common features just to provide a basic overview of possible ways religion and science might relate to one another. Let's look at three fundamental options. The first model maintains that science and religion are enemies, battling for supremacy in an effort to have absolute authority over explaining the world that we live in. This view is often found in fundamentalist forms of religion, including certain branches of Christian evangelicalism. These groups might reject science because they believe it contradicts the basic tenets of their sacred text, for example, the Bible. If the Bible says that God created human beings from the dust of the earth, but science tells us that human beings evolved from other non-human creatures, Creatures over the period of millions of years, how do we settle this conflict? One could easily conclude that if science is correct, the Bible must be wrong. This is very unnerving to certain religious people, and so they view science as an enemy to their religious faith. But it's not just religious people who believe that science and religion are enemies. There are scientists who believe this as well. Some scientists maintain that the scientific explanation of the world demonstrates that religious explanations are wrong or unnecessary or at worst dangerous. 
people often refer to this worldview as scientific materialism. The second model maintains that science and religion don't conflict because they really don't have anything to do with one another. Science and religion deal with completely different fields of knowledge and completely different sets of questions, so there's no reason for there to be any interaction between science and religion. The American paleontologist Stephen Jay Gold maintained this view, saying that religion and science are non-overlapping magisteria. In other words, religion shouldn't have anything to say about scientific claims, and scientific claims shouldn't have anything to say about religious claims. It might be helpful to think of this in terms of an analogy. Imagine that religion is baseball and science is basketball. Baseball teams can play against other baseball teams, and basketball teams can play against other basketball teams. But it wouldn't make any sense to have a baseball team play against a basketball team. Why? Because they're two completely different sports, and they operate by a completely different set of rules and in different settings a baseball diamond versus a basketball court. See, Carl, I know things about sports. Go sports! I love in basketball when they score the touchdown. The third model maintains that science and religion can work together in a mutually enriching experience. In other words, science can make religion better, and religion can make science better. And collectively, they can help contribute to a more comprehensive worldview, that is, a more comprehensive understanding of the world in which we live. After all, while science and religion do ask different types of questions, they both claim to deal with the same fundamental thing reality, whether that reality is purely natural or ultimate, transcendent, or supernatural. In this model, science can provide us with reliable data about what the world is like and how it works. But science can't tell us if the world is good, or if it has meaning, or what it might look like to live a moral life. For these types of questions, we need religion, or at least philosophy. In my experience, students tend to assume that religion and science are enemies. They tend to gravitate toward that first model. I think the reason for this is because, in pop culture, science and religion are often presented as enemies, over issues like how old is the Earth, or evolution, or things like that. But it's important to note that many scientists and many religious people reject this enemy's perspective. They don't think science and religion are enemies. They also reject the idea that science and religion have nothing to do with one another. They may acknowledge that science and religion ask different types of questions, but they think that science and religion can work together to provide a more comprehensive worldview. Science can help describe the world in which religious people live, and religion can provide a framework of meaning and morality to the findings of science. To really get into how these different models might function, we would have to look at specific cases. For example, the case of evolution, or the question, how old is the universe and how old is the Earth? But I'll save that conversation for another time. The point of this video was to explore the relationship between science and religion by first defining both terms, or at least providing a definition for both terms, and then exploring different models of how science and religion relate to one another. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, farewell.